basics of palpation, basics of examination, any patient, you are going to stand on the right side of the patient. Okay, and with the ulnar border of your left hand, you're going to palpate the uterine height. Okay, so how do we do this? We do this by, this is the abdomen, I'll be drawing this again and again. Okay, so this is the umbilicus. So I start here and with the ulnar border of my left hand, I'm standing to the right of the patient and we'll be showing you this in a video also, so you can understand better. We bring our hand down. Okay, we bring our hand down till the point where we first feel resistance. So what is that resistance? That resistance is the uterine fundus. Okay, that means the top of the uterus. So you may feel resistance here, 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 here. Now, wherever you feel resistance, that point is the uterine height. And we have some predefined areas, okay, which are described and which I will be telling you. So we have some predefined areas. So for example, if the uterine height is here, this is where you're first feeling resistance. This is a 20 week size uterus. Okay. So this uterine height is very important. If you if you see our gynae case examination, if you're examining an abdominal mass, we always used to use, use the weeks of a gravid uterus to describe any abdominal mass in our gynae examination because we're so aware and we're so used to talking about the height of the uterus in pregnancy that we, we extrapolated to doing a gynae examination also, okay. So here, when does the, here is very important, the questions that we are asked that you should know are when is the uterus, when is the uterus first palpated? So when does the uterus become an abdominal organ? The uterus becomes an abdominal organ. That means you can first palpate it just above the pubic symphysis at 12 weeks of pregnancy. So that's when you can actually first feel resistance slightly above the pubic symphysis. So before 12 weeks, how, is, how are we seeing the uterine height? So when you're talking about a patient, suppose you're given a case to examine and she's less than 12 weeks. So your inspection, you're not going to find much. On palpation, you're of course not going to be able to palpate the uterus. Then what's important is your bimanual examination, which we will talk about when we do a vaginal examination. The uterus will be enlarged, it will be more than normal, but it will be less than the, or it won't be palpable per abdomen. So then we do a bimanual exam to see the height or the size of the uterus, okay? So at 12 weeks, it becomes palpable. At It is at the lower border of the umbilicus at 20 weeks. So in between around 16 weeks, it's midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis, okay? So it, it is at the lower border of the umbilicus at 20 weeks. It's at the upper border of the umbilicus at 24 weeks. And then it starts increasing in size and reaches the ziphy sternum at 36 weeks, okay? So in between, we can divide this as 28 weeks and 32 weeks, right? So we have 12 weeks at the pubic symphysis, 16 weeks midway between the pubic symphysis and the umbilicus, lower border of the umbilicus 20 weeks, upper border of umbilicus 24 weeks, ziphy sternum 36 weeks, and in between, we can divide two further divisions between the umbilicus and the ziphy sternum, 28 weeks and 32 weeks. What happens at term? So this is the 36 weeks. At term, that means 37 weeks and beyond, what's going to happen? Usually the head goes in, the pelvis. So if the head goes in, there's a feeling of lightning, okay? The patient feels actually a lot better. And what is going to happen? The flanks become full. So the uterus drops down, okay, to 30 two weeks and the flanks when you see the flanks the lateral part of her abdomen you feel you see a fullness okay so 32 weeks so at after 37 weeks the uterus is at 32 weeks and the flanks are full okay so that's how you look for the uterine height and that's the first thing we see on palpation now, why is this important? Why is the uterine height important? Because number one, ideally the uterine height should correspond to the period of gestation. What does this mean? If she is 32 weeks pregnancy, this is where I should feel resistance. If she is 28 weeks pregnant, this is where I should feel resistance. If she is 16 weeks pregnant, this is where I should feel resistance. If she is 8 weeks pregnant, I should not be able to palpate the, palpate the uterus per abdomen. So, suppose... I find a patient whose uterine height is more than the period of gestation. What does this mean? 
suppose she is 28 weeks pregnant i calculate her by her lmp she is 28 weeks so i expect the uterus to be here right but suppose i examine her and i find that the uterus is at 32 weeks it's higher than what is expected so what are the things i'm going to think of what are my differential diagnosis in my mind based on this clinical examination i now need to start thinking of causes of things that may increase the uterine height more than the pog so what's the first thing i will think of the first thing I will think of is maybe the patient has not emptied her bladder or maybe I have not asked her to empty her bladder. So recheck, ask the patient, maybe she's gone but ask her to go again and first reconfirm your findings. Maybe the bladder is full, maybe there's been an incomplete evacuation or maybe she's just not voided at all. So check again after she has emptied her bladder. What's the second thing that can cause a uterine height more than the POG? Maybe you calculated her POG wrongly. So recalculate her dates. These are the first two things that can cause a binding of the uterine height more than the POG. So recalculate her dates, reconfirm her LMP, check whether she has a first trimester scan, corroborate the current POG with her first trimester scan, ask her to empty her bladder again. If everything looks all right, then think of things like macrosomia. Maybe the baby is big. Okay. Maybe she's GDM or maybe just physiologically the baby is bigger. What else? There could be multiple pregnancy. Maybe you missed a twin or a triplet. So recheck her ultrasounds or get another scan done. Find out the reason. Maybe there is a multiple pregnancy. Examine her. Maybe you find multiple fetal poles or multiple limbs or maybe two fetal heart rates, so multiple pregnancy. What else could the be, be the cause? There could be fibroid uterus or any space occupying lesion in the pelvis or the uterus. And the most common one is a fibroid uterus. So maybe she's a known case of fibroid, maybe she doesn't know. Okay, so you can re recheck, get another ultrasound done and see if there's a fibroid there. Okay, and the last important one is a polyhydramnios. That means the AFI is increased, the amniotic fluid index or the amniotic fluid is increased leading to polyhydramnios. Another thing you can think of is a concealed abruption. Okay, concealed abruption patient though will not silently present to your OPD. She would have more symptoms if it's that much concealed that it's more than the period of gestation. She would definitely be uncomfortable. She would be having pain. She might have bleeding or spotting. Okay, she might be hypertensive. So you will have other things in your clinical picture also. But yes, it might be a concealed abruption. What is a concealed abruption? Abruption is premature separation of the placenta. And it could be concealed where the blood is all piling up behind the placenta. Or it could be revealed where she is having active bleeding. Okay, so in a concealed abruption, or a mixed abruption where there is both revealed and concealed, you will find blood retroplacental collection and that's how the uterus looks bigger than the period of gestation. The second scenario is that the uterine height is less than the POG. So same patient, when she's 28 weeks POG, but when you examine her, you find the uterus is 24 weeks. So what are the things you're going to think of? The first thing again is you recheck your Dates, maybe her you've calculated her period of gestation wrongly. Maybe she's told you a wrong LMP. Check if she has ultrasounds, especially a first trimester scan. So corroborate your dating. What else? Then start thinking of things like maybe it's fetal growth restriction. So the opposite of macrosomia is fetal growth restriction. The opposite of polyhydramnios is oligohydramnios. Okay, what else could cause a Le a uterine height which is lesser than the period of gestation could be actually an intrauterine fetal death. So maybe the baby has died in utero. So an IUD can also give the appearance of the uterine height less than the period of gestation. One of the most common things we think of is actually fetal growth restriction. Okay, and that's this is our performs our clinical basis for diagnosing. FGR. Okay. 
So these are the causes and I'll just add one more here just to complete the list, a, list a transverse lie. So when the baby is in transverse lie, it's lying down like this, not like this, it's like this. So the uterus becomes lesser than the POG. It's called a squat uterus, like somebody is sitting down, okay, because the baby is like this. So the uterus is called a squat uterus, the height will be less than the period, maybe slightly less than the period of gestation. So these are the causes and this is where clinical questions can come from. So the first thing in palpation is to look at the uterine height.